At this point, it would actually be funnier. Whoop. A little more dialogue with him? At this point, it would actually be funnier if Aladoro just was the real dude and actually a hero somehow. Like, because of how heavily telegraphed his, his, uh, duplicity is that you're like, well, man, we get it. In times like these, when truth and lies are blurred, the only thing to believe is your gut instinct about a person. I trust Aladoro. He wants to save people and seek out the truth. Anyhow, you gave me the first lead on Aladoro I've had in months. Take this in return. Consider it a gift suitable for times like these. Oh, there's new dialogue. Weird. Life is short. And All I can do is... Okay. I guess that was it. Dialogue's always goofy, but I think... I feel like this game both streamlines and makes it more goofy than normal for Souls games. Where you're just like, what? I want to hand you have obvious uh, dialogue tree menus that have highlighted new options, but also still just the weird quirks of just kicking you out of the dialogue when in many cases it just doesn't make sense to leave yet. Like, that thing was, he might as well have just said that. Like, that was direct follow-up to the option I picked. Why doesn't he just end by saying that? And then give you the thing. Why is it? Why is it end the conversation? Just strange moments like that. Yeah, at this point, it would be the sub the subversive surprise thing would be to have him actually be upstanding and so. But you can't at this point. I'm just saying that it's it's so heavily given up that he is the baddie that you almost expect it to turn around and be wrong somehow. But no. It's too cut and dry. You can't, you can't contradict it now. It wouldn't work. These make me feel like a rock's gonna come flying down them. No, he's definitely a bad guy. It's just the surprise. The re surprise reveals that he's Al not, not Aladoro, but that's too obvious now too. Hi. Please stop living. You know, for me, as a favor. Uh oh, eh. yeah. No, that's that's another goofy, dumb thing that people probably shout at me when these videos come out. Why don't you use the Fable Catalyst whenever you complain about not having- Oh god, does he have dynamite? No, it's like a skirt. Okay. I thought he was holding a bushel of dynamite that was hanging down or something, and I'm like, uh, That's a lot of explody you got there. Alright. They definitely see me. Oh, RIP that thought process. Oh, it was a I was commenting on the fact that, uh, I could have used Fable Catalyst every single time. I was like, why do I have to start boss fights untransformed? It's like, well, there's a resource I'm never using. Might as well use it for that. Oops. Ow. Explode. That guy's dead as fuck. I keep saying guy, but it was female coded. But also, it's a robot. Ah! Ah! Oh, you die quick. That is... that's a carcass, huh? I currently have my increased damage to carcasses thing equipped. I never switched it. I think I have it equipped? Because I thought it might work on that boss, but I don't know what they count it as. Especially since, like, for all I know, phase one was a carcass and phase two was a puppet. Because they took over a puppet body. Or different parts of its body had different damage types. 
Or it's neither, because it's a lobster crawdad thing. Huh? Hello, this direction. Oh, here's the thing I saw earlier. Frayed notebook. It's a worn out journal with blood stains. Golden wings are drawn on the cover. I do not regret destroying the Santa statue. I had to stop it from being used for humans. Of course, they'll find another way. But at least those who escaped will find freedom. If I have any regrets, it's just one. God save that child. I came from across the wide ocean. From across the wide ocean. We're back to this alarm again. Familiar. Oh, earthquakes. Something is up. It. Mmm. Decay, not corruption. Can you make it there in time? Yes. Now we wait 10 minutes for it to empty so I can run all the way back. Then I wait 10 minutes for it to empty so I can run the next leg. Wow. Oh, for a saw blade I will never use. We. I don't think this made it into the final edit, but I was so disappointed at one point when I was when I was stuck in the puppet master. I was trying to like check out other, however the people fought him to get an idea of like just different approaches and so on, and just try to change my behavior. I don't think it's even particular cheating. Like when you when you've already seen a boss fight, and you know how it goes. At some point, it's just like useful to look at what other people do a bit, and just let's see if you're fundamentally, fundamentally misunderstanding the whole thing. I see toasters fight against him, and toaster just spammed throwable items and had a summon with him. And I was like, oh, well, that's just, I mean, not not gonna be the guy who's doing the same thing that happened to me when I played Dark Souls 2 back in the day, and people yelled at me for summoning, but like. You know, they're all part of the game, they're valid. And also, like, especially in, like, Blood and Elden Ring's case, it just felt like you basically had to summon anyway. But I'm like, that's just not the playstyle I'm doing here. Maybe a boss fight will eventually be so tough that I caved to summoning, but no. But so far, it's like, this is very much been a no summoning playthrough. 21-23. Train ticket to St. Marion. The text is too hard, is hard to read because of the bloodstains. Train to St. Marion. Things are ungood. Decidedly so. It always does feel- it, does, it definitely does feel cheesy to start spamming items in particular, where I'm just like, ah, hmm. It's the kind of thing I would do out of desperation once I'm, like, stuck on something like... Millennia or Malaketh for days or hours. Then it's like, okay, fuck it, everything's on the table. Elden Ring was such a combination of being so crushingly difficult Elden Ring was so crushingly difficult, but also it was just the fact that it was so long. That like, just, my my morale was breaking at the idea of having to play a game that hard for that long, being one of the longest playthroughs I'd done so far, potentially. That like, relatively early on I was like, okay, this is a summoning playthrough. There's, not only does every- did so many of the boss fights feel borderline insurmountable without summons, but like, the idea of overcoming that challenge and having to do it so many times to get through the game felt like it was going to destroy me. And what was so desperate and kind of depressing about fights like Malaketh and Melania 
was that they would, in many cases, make extremely quick work of my summon, too. And I was like, fuck, that was my... That's been how I've got through the whole game, is that at least I have this this dude that's kind of tanky and can stick around throughout the fight and help me out. I haven't seen one of those doors for a while. But then freaking Millennia and Malaketh would like, without even directly going after them, would like be killing them with AoE attacks because of how crazy their swords were just while you were fi fighting them. Or if they did focus your summon, they'd kill them so quickly. Because they had, like, especially... Mulaney was just brutal because of the massive spamming of it, how much she attacked, but then Malaketh had a status effect that would just delete anything because it because of what it did to maximum health. And you're like, man, these are the hardest fights in the game, and they're, like, uniquely good at killing your summons specifically. And that was not why they're the hardest fight in the game, but it was just comically brutal that... The, the hardest thing so far was also really good at getting rid of you, one of your best sources of help. Well, that's bad goop. I wonder if I can dispel, if I can dispel it. Right, you get for, you go after the the thingy and it kills it. Hmm. Is there anything to knock me down? Ah, uh, shortcut. Which I don't have access to yet, right? Yep. It was brutal to have to overcome that challenge at that point. But also it was kind of validating in a way where you're like, Okay, I feel better about my choice of having to kind of cheese through the game a little bit because... If I had had to do that all this time and then also this moment of intense difficulty happened, it might have just broken me. Like I wasn't gonna make it. Whereas, like, at least this is the only part that's like this, oh fuck. I think I've heard that this game also has a huge difficulty spike, so we'll see how that goes. Of course, I've also heard that the game was nerfed already before I got to it, so... Anyone that wants to discount my accomplishments already has a built-in thing to say. Because people love to do that. Oh, fuck. That doesn't last very long. Get deleted, nerd! Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! Resplendent Ergo. <gasps> it's a quartz! Da na na na! I got a quartz. 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 Meow, 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 meow. Uh, I've only used one heal so far. There's no reason to go back. There's only everything in this hallway will respawn. So I might as well just go this way and hop down. Or you can hop off that onto there and go down there. Which looks like the same room overall, but with less danger, maybe? I don't know. Here's a plunging attack opportunity. I just gotta be aware that this guy's gonna be coming after me now. Oh, that works better if I actually land that attack. Okay, we got it. We got some thermite. Shit's dangerous. What the fuck are you doing? He still climbs up even when you're down here. That's very funny. Just not an effective way of antagonizing me at that point. I wish I could tell. I wish this was a setting. Wish I could just always have this thing turned on. 
instead of having it be a thing on my body that I have to... Oh god. His head gone. He's all tentacles. Okay. Clickers. <laughs> They're just clickers. I, I know what this is. Those are clickers. Except that clickers don't do this. Oh no, tentacles coming out of the floor. I'm so compromised. Uh, oh god, how many of them are doing it? Oh no, this is actually cursed. It's a cursed attack because you just can't track what's happening when so many of them can do it. Did they have to have line of sight? That's somewhat unexpected, but also helpful if they have to maintain line of sight. Okay. But yeah, once I realized how many of them were in line of sight, I'm like, oh, um, we're leaving. We're leaving. We're leaving. <laughs> Literally, whenever I try to fight any of them, one of them could have their head to the ground and be doing tentacles out of the ground at me. Now is not the time for floor tentacles. That one has a weapon now. It's probably the way forward, and this is probably optional. It's also probably a, tra a trap or something. Resplendent ergo. Is there a way inside? Item over here. Special purification ampule. Yeah, I don't see anything else to do here. I guess it was just a Mergo. Okay. No enemy this time. Uh, uh, no. No. It's gonna have to take me out to for dinner first. Boop. Tentacles don't stop moving when he dies. That's really unnerving. I can't tell if that's... What's that blue item? I keep seeing. Oh, is, oh, that over there. I can't tell if that's just, like... Weird... I don't think it's even a ragdoll. I think it's just, like, a canned thing, but... I can't tell if it's just that those tentacles just can't calm down, like, in the animation or whatever, or if they're supposed to be implied to be still alive. This is the other side of the beam. Let's see, it's open. I don't need. I still haven't healed much, so I don't need to reset and make this hallway come back. Might as well try to fight this guy first, because he might stop respawning if I beat him. Oh, come on, man. I'm not, I have to avoid the entire left wall of this room. That's rough. Oh, I fell down the stairs. That sucks. It's specifically that the attack didn't go off, which just sucked. Oh god. Ta-da! The, the way that I, to this day, play this game with claw grip at all times. Ah! I don't know... Do, wait, oh god. Stop it. I hope I don't run out of these. If you ever want to think about how I'm beyond saving, just consider the fact that every time, whenever I'm playing this game, I press the B button with my index finger. It's just because I want to maintain 
that's how I'm running with my camera moving and everything is I'm using the thumb on the on the right stick and and I'm hitting B with the uh, with my index finger with my middle finger kind of around bump the trigger and bumper but honestly I, I do pivot to my index finger pressing trigger and bumper I don't really use my anything besides my thumb and my index fingers Oh, that would have been a great double kill. Just a little bit of air go. Why not? Well, that looks unpleasant. Ha, 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 ha. Ow. Well, not getting through this clean. Where's the other gloopy boy? There he is. Jeez. Any of this worth it? Once again, once again, not one thousand percent sure what I even picked up half the time. Oh well, there was at least some air going there, and also just as rewarding as rewards are, I also do just like to explore and go to all the places and grab all the items. That is a matter of personal pride. So I'm a little, I'm a little goofy for the way that I always talk. Uh, that thing's wild. Have I fought that before? Oh god. Really? You're gonna tell me I can't go through that? Okay. Normal video game. This game's gonna call this a barrier. There's a body in some boxes, but we show you the outside room. Look at that. Look at this Bioshock-ass view. Look at this view that exists because of Bioshock coming out in 2007. <laughs> wow, yeah, you can't go anywhere besides directly at him, because there's some boxes around. It's extremely goofy. This game is so goofy. It's a goofy-ass game. I might as well just die against him. They probably won't get him on the first try. Yeah. Ow! Oh, my combo reset. Why'd that happen? Mommy, why is this lobster rock it's Rock Lobster mad at me. Ow. Ow. Whoa, this thing attacks like the tigers from... Oh. You're gonna be kind of brutal, aren't you? It look it attacks like like Lud and Zalen. Ow. Which is not what I expected from a thing that looks like this. Tail strike? No. We got, um, Murderer's Puppet Samulet. Murderer Puppet Samulet increases damage inflicted on humans who wish to pay me tribute. The joy of having killed a human lies dormant within the clockwork heart. I will kill. I will kill anything that resembles a human. Tribute? You steal men's souls, and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religion. Your words are as empty as your soul. How many times has that come up? On this channel. I still haven't played that game. I haven't played any Castlevania games. That's fucking weird. I need to fix that. Maybe that's coming up next. I need to play a classic game. After Tears of the Kingdom, probably, unless something too important comes out. 
And I've been over... Oh, God. Okay, that looks cramped and frustrating to play in. Oh, they worked. What was the other path I thought I saw? Let's make. Let's be sure. Oh, because this is likely to be a shortcut, too. There was a period of time where I would say my favorite game was Symphony of the Night, and there was a period of time where I would say my favorite game was Mass Effect 1, specifically. The best Mass Effect. No contest. Like, at this point, I think maybe people are becoming more likely to realize that Mass Effect 1 was always the best one, and that the sequels kind of both were really a little lame. Listen, I, I had to sit through so many fucking podcasts where I would hear people at like Rooster Teeth or whatever say like, oh yeah, Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 is amazing. Just, just skip the first one. I'm like, oh, ah, no, no, don't skip the, don't skip the best fucking game. Mass Effect 2 is fine. Mass Effect 2 is fine. Mass Effect 1 is comically better than Mass Effect 2. And it's so annoying every time someone says, let's get the first one. You can have larger criticisms about like how Bioware handled its games in that era. And the sort of copaganda aspects of Mass Effect, blah, 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 blah. But like, Mass Effect 1 is just such comically a better game than 2 and 3. That's like, it's deeply frustrating that how much people don't get that. But anyway, there was a whole period of time where I'd also say my favorite game was Rock Band 3, where I would say that it was Symphony of the Night, and where, and eventually where I would say it's like Dark Souls 2 or something, I don't know, who cares. There's a billion good games and there are a bunch of them are cool and whatever, and favorite is a stupid word. But th I'm just saying that like, as, as, there was a period of time where I really liked Ma uh, Castlevania. I was never a mega fan, like, I've never been a mega fan of almost anything, I've never been obsessive over anything. I kind of like made myself obsessive over Beastars because I was making such a big video over it that I was like, I need to pour over every detail of this and be, but I, I don't, I never have that kind of like fandom stamina to overcommit to a game lo the way like that, the way that people do when they really fix it on something. But uh, yeah, there was a period of time where every time I saw a Castlevania game, I'd be psyched about like all of the Metroidvania-ish ones. I, I didn't, I never, I didn't play the 3D ones that came later or even the 3D games that, that came out in the middle. And I never played uh, the earliest games originally, but I loved Symphony of the Night as a kid. And I, and when I had a DS, I made a point to get every single Castlevania you can play on the DS between the DS ones and the like Game Boy Advance ones. So like, I am re relatively familiar with Soma Cruz and Summer Cruise 2 Electric Boogaloo now with a, a dual st uh, annoying uh, dual screen stylus gimmick where you draw symbols, which was stupid. <laughs> uh, and then one of these days I gotta get around to playing more of those. I've played enough fucking Metroidvanias that it's weird that I... It's weird that I haven't played a Castlevania game yet, and it's weird that I've played multiple Metroids now before playing a single Castlevania game when I never liked Metroid before. Hand, and now I've played three or four of them? I don't know. Maybe it's simply in the nighttime, finally. This is this this rant's happening here for some reason. Oh, because I did the the I did the, the monologue. Not a monologue, it's dialogue. That's what that word means. You fool. Central Crot station platform. What could go wrong? Yes. Don't you like the gag when I get too close to the microphone I adopted like six months ago? It's so funny. <laughs> I'm so funny. Okay, calm down. Outside vehicles. See, that's the way we took to get up here. Yeah, okay, so we need to go out here and then go right, because there's... Yeah, because we're trying to get back to where I fought the mini-boss. It has been a few hours. It's the same episode for you guys, but for me, we did a whole Lethal Company session. And now it is the evening. And I get to carefully hope that the drink I had for Lethal Company fun times does not compromise my ability to ha be good combat boy. All damage? No. Okay, so we poked at this place. 
but have not done much yet here. Well. That was pretty much my fear of trying to do anything in there. Hello? No side guys. Come on, man. But somehow that works, of course. Whatever. It's so strange what doesn't doesn't work there. The more I think about it with my growing supply of healing items, it does feel like a little bit of a missed opportunity the way that uh, none of you getting more healing is based on exploration. Secret. We are... Yes, behind the train car where you woke up. Wait, what... What is this? Who would put a workshop like this here? Of all places. Good. Grief. Yep, they were always going to do this. They were always, if you're emulating Souls games, you were always going to do the thing where you go behind the beginning area and you're like, whoa, we're here again. Like when you go behind the Bloodborne place and get into Yosefka's clinic proper and like, it's all, well, wow, there's so much in here. Yeah, given that it's good to have exploration based rewards like quartz and whatnot. It does feel like a missed opportunity that they made the Estus Flask upgrades of this game a skill tree thing instead of a thing you can find. Because the skill tree is just a less exciting way to upgrade that thing. It's also such a powerful thing to put on the skill tree that it's hard to ever pick anything else. Like, why wouldn't you... Like, what percentage of players is not picking the one that increases how many heals you get? I just... It's hard to justify. I have perfected the greatest puppet. Now. That child again. Pedo's tools. Upgrade weapon. Whoa. Chances to do all the upgrades you normally do in town. A letter from someone who has gone ahead. Dear Geppetto's puppet, who who will come to this workshop train. I'm really thankful to you. A workshop train hidden by Geppetto. Isn't that something? If not you, how... Shouldn't I say if not for you? If not for you, how would I have found this place? Unfortunately for Geppetto, I have the ability to read someone's memories. In Malum District, I had a hunch. They thought that if they found you... Geppetto was puppet, they'd find the relic he stole. And that lunch that hunch was right. The relic has been returned to our sacred place. Now that the stage is set, the doors will open. I know all this is confusing, but soon you'll learn everything. Thank you. You were a good guide. S M. No, I've been fooled. Because of all the choices what the game had. And what is this? A lot of break cartridge. That's a lot of break cartridge. It's just a different piece of equipment. I almost never change my gear. I should check what I can get away with again. Weight wise. They did make gear as boring as possible by having it be a bunch of modular parts that are invisible to you functionally. Upgrade weapon, alter handle. Can craft a new Legion arm if we want to. I don't think anything is new though.
I hear a monster, but... Is there nowhere else to go here? You can hear them all through the walls, but it's just because they all came back to life. We found the shortcut back to the beginning, but where are we actually going next? Oh, there's an enemy down there. Oh, glowy. There's a chest in there, so you can definitely get there. Right, I guess I was on top of the train car thing, so if I just drop down on the other side, we go there. Okay, they don't want us going there. But there is an item down there, so there's at least a way to get there. Oh. Here we are. I was like, where the hell's the rest of the level? <laughs> where are we going next? The sounds we were hearing were coming from in here. But there doesn't seem to be anything in there. I know there was a collapse, but why did they have to cut off all communication? Please let us out. Chain. Someone behind me too. Ah, stop it. Oh god. It's really unpleasant. God damn it. It's the previous tentacles problem where it's just like there's too many enemies that have too much range in the same room. It's a rough situation where the one that has the one that's nowhere near you can always be attacking you and that can just keep looping over and over again. God damn it. You're still alive? God damn. Somebody's screaming. They should stop. They're too loud. Master Chef's knife blade. Oh, can't get past that small board. Defeat a million badasses, but a small piece of wood. <gasps> the vapors. That was a chance for a visceral attack, but I wasn't ready for it. I'd already started doing something. You guys like it when I do that attack a lot? <laughs> Vivid ergo. Not seeing much else around here. Friend? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, we're back at the... We're properly back at the beginning. This was the first boss fight room, right? We're actually going back to the first level now. I don't think they're friendly. Oh, it's a weasel. 
Hi. Nope, rude. Oopsie, that was a waste. That was also a waste. I guess technically. I've got bad news for all of your internals. What the fuck was that? She went so far away. Oh, that interrupted me? Ow! Ow. Alright, thanks for your philosophy or whatever. Guess who's strong? Got horrible news for you. <laughs> uh huh. Nice try. Okay. <laughs> You're the one that attacked me. Were you planning on eating me? That seems like the implication. I feel like a lot on I feel like money's not going very far these days. So I feel like you were just going to eat me. Yeah, this is just the same level recycled, but they moved the they moved the goofy uh, luggage around and that makes the level new. <laughs> I get what they're going for, it's always like a whoa, we got back to the beginning part. But I don't think it really works in this game. It's not like actively bad or anything, but it's like it's kind of meaningless in this context. Like, who cares? Oh, that me looking at that door and seeing that was supposed to make me go like, oh my god, it's the the statue from the beginning of the game. Cause that that fight I did earlier was in the first area you spawned in, maybe or something. It wasn't that iconic and recognizable is the problem, so I was just like, I was just like, that seems neat. I didn't realize it was exactly that. But no, why, the part of why this doesn't work for me is just that it's just, it's distractingly goofy that they're making it a new level by just moving the dumb luggage around that was goofy the moment I started playing this game, but now they're moving it to change the level layouts. And it's like... I literally... I called this out at the beginning of the game. Oops. I called it out at the very beginning of our playthrough that not only was the luggage really goofy that it was being used as a barrier, but like once you went outside in the courtyard, it was very obviously only allowing you to go in these two directions and everything else was blocked. And it's like, really? They're gonna... Like immediately I, I, I realized like this would be a very easy thing to move because it's just a stupid, it's just a goofy prefab asset that you can just slide around. Oops, you're alive still. I immediately called out how much it stood out to me that like, the, these, these really goofy pieces of luggage and suitcases, blah, blah, blah. You can just move them around and that would change where you could go. And it was in particular pretty just noticeable that there was just like other directions off in the distance that you clearly would go to. Yep, that out there is where it just was, and I guess that platform over there, yeah, that's the train I started on. That middle part was closed before though? There was not a train there before. Or there was a train there before, so you couldn't go around that, that freely, so it's pretty destroyed. It's not very recognizable, it looks very different from before. But that, that, that is what was going on, though, I guess, is that I, I literally ended up in the train from the beginning and went back one compartment to find that, oh, right behind there was a secret all along, behind this privacy screen. I think uh, an admission of defeat a little bit 
is the fact that even the game felt the need to explain what happened. Like, Jiminy has to explain, Whoa, we're behind the part of the train you started on. And it's like, were you even there? I don't think you were even there when I started. But, uh... But, like, the, the train's just not that recognizable. It just is a train, and there's more than one train, so it's like... Uh... The game kind of does just have to just throw its hands up and give up and just be like, Hey! You're at the beginning. You're behind the room from the beginning. This feels significant, right? And it's like, I maybe? I don't know if it does feel that significant. It definitely, it's stronger when you have the, the whoa moment all on your own in other Souls type games that do that. And I get what they were going for, but just isn't that strong here. In particular because uh, that payoff I think is really it really leans heavily on the interconnected world feeling that this game doesn't really have. And I don't think you need to have the interconnected world. Like, I, I'm i totally fine with Dark Souls 2 and Demon's Souls' approach, and, and even Dark Souls 3 doesn't do something about that. Like, it was really a part of Dark Souls 1 that's, like, overly emphasized as being like that. And Bloodborne does a version of it, both with the whole part where you come up a ladder and end up being able to explore behind you, Yosefka's Clinic. I'm probably gonna go back out there and the and all the luggage is gonna have moved around and let me go somewhere else now. Or it's gone. But you don't have to do the interconnected world in quite that way, but if you're going to go for that payoff, you kind of do need to, because it's a payoff of that approach to level design. Being like, whoa, we're back here. Oh my god, this I can't believe this fourth different thing led back to Firelink Shrine again. This, this elevator goes where? Whoa! But like, having me do a long string of completely linear levels... Not like linear within the levels, they're all cool Dark Souls-y levels in the moment. But they're just, they're just end to end to end in a long string of levels that you have to play in that order. And then at the end of it, one of them happens to lead you directly to... A, uh... One of them happens to lead you directly to the beginning of the game again. You're like, whoa, whoa. It's just not the same effect. Remember the metal angel. We are simply a journey that follows the fo his footsteps. Song of the day. The pickpocket who was overconfident in a gamble had his heart stolen and died. What? Workshop Master's Workwear, and the Carrier Amulet plus one. Carrier Amulet plus one. Carrier's Amulet. Carrier's Amulet plus one. Let's see. 52, 46, 41. See, so yeah, it is stronger. Fifty two forty six, that's a difference of six percent. Five percent. So it's about twice as strong. That's pretty good for increasing your overall weight limit. I go from one ten to one twenty seven to one forty three. So overall going from here to here, I gain a weight limit of forty three of thirty three. That's a lot. That would take a lot of levels to do. That's stronger than most of the things that increase your stuff tend to be. How much does increasing my motivity by four do? My motivity's at 35. Uh, defense, attack, weapon ability, uh, 232 plus 232 plus 143, so that increases my attack by 10. Which isn't the worst, it's what I'm doing by leveling my, my strength in the first place. But overall, it does kind of call into attention that like, oh, I'm only increasing it by... I'm at close to 400, so increasing it by 10 isn't a huge deal. It all adds up, though. I guess that's kind of a thing, is that the, the rings just aren't mostly that impactful. <clears throat> 
But if I increase my weight capacity complete, uh, significantly, it's probably better than the max HP upgrade. And that lets me wear, wear heavier gear, if nothing else. Because this stuff isn't mostly that strong. I have no other liners, period, still. Okay. Let's see. What's the heaviest one? 6.2, 7.4. That's the highest one. I'm already wearing the heaviest one, it's 13. Well, this is 16. I was reading the wrong, wrong part of the screen. Was I? Oh, it's it's not from this to this. It's saying that the left is... The left is its, its weight and the right is how much it's changing by. Okay. That threw me off. So that's 19.4, 16. Yeah, they're, they're in order too. So 8.5... This still has me... So I, I just went from... 20 to 28. So it's a significant increase in my physical re damage reduction rate. <clears throat> These are special effects. Yeah, it doesn't have a huge impact on physical, but it has different effects on disruption, shock, shock and break. And these are these other elements. Physical, fire, electric, acid. And weirdly, I don't have any more liners. Maybe I need to check if there's more liners at the shop. Let's see if I can afford a better liner. Yeah, significantly increasing my carry capacity does mean I can just finally wear something else, which is worth trying. In a way, it's like extra goofy that like we proceeded forward into just future teleport spots. Like it's still going forward through the teleports, which is weird because it's supposed to be me going back to an old zone and continually underselling the idea that I found that I found somewhere new. Do you sell liners? Okay, that's here's all the liners. So what's the heaviest one? Nine point eight. 9.8, 9.8. Slash, strike, pierce. Pierce. Slash. I'd probably go for str uh, strike, which is, I think, all the big heavy hits that keep coming down on me. Do they have different overall values? That's like... 28 overall. Hmm, this one has more. Yeah. It's 25 plus 7 is like 32. 15 plus 19 is 24 plus 6 is 30. This one seems like it has the lowest overall value. I'm not adding the decimals at the end though, which could increase them all by one or two overall, but that's still a big difference. One of them's being 32 and one of them being 28. Because 12 plus seven is 19 and then 19 plus nine is 28. So this one actually has the, the lowest overall total. Is there a different one I'm missing? Because that's disappointing. They all obviously specialize, but I wanted to increase my strike damage reduction because I feel like strike damage is really common. But I think they anticipated that and made that the weakest one. As a result, though, this is kind of the most evenly... most even one. Seven and nine are the other variables. These ones are seven and six. Nine and, and six, not that far off.
Slash isn't that far off. I guess I'll get the Slash one, maybe. I'm trying to just reduce my incoming damage. This takes me to 51, so I'm still lower weight than I was before, but now my defense stats have gone up considerably. And that's probably worth more than the little bit of health I lost, so... I'm relatively comfy thar. Whatever choice. Can I afford to level up? Uh, yes. I have 15,000 on me. Okay. Let's get to 12,200. I wish you could just level up and it would just consume stuff from that screen. Whatever choice. Whatever choice you make, whatever move you make, I will level you. Level 74. We're getting there. I believe I got no quartz. <gasps> I have a quartz! I forgot! It was one of the semi-secret parts of the... train station, I believe. This might be the one I need to get the next skill. No, it's not. I want my Fable Slot! Right, so I got my last attack, so let's get a survival now. Automatically charges pulse cells when they're discharged. Enhances resistance to status and moments. Recovers some guard H guard regain as HP when perfect guard successful. So this means I heal. I heal if I parry perfectly, but only if I've blocked before to take damage. Lower damage received when pulse cells are discharged is kind of handy as just a survival mechanic. Lowers the lard guard regain reduction. So you lose your health that you could regain less to increase the chance that you might regain it. <laughs> it's really hard to when you try to explain it like that, you start to sound insane. Another lowers the guard regain reduction. Enhances guard regain recovery when attacking enemies. Oh. That makes the rally mechanic stronger. That's probably worth getting. Yeah. Let's make the rally mechanic stronger. If you're confused, rally is what it was called in Bloodborne, I believe. The thing where you lose health, but if you hit them back, you gain health. But only that part. It rewarded being extremely aggressive. And in some circles, it made people more tactical and interesting. And in some circles, it made them just a... Saw cleaver swinging fiend, where you would just switch the saw cleaver and just spam the shit out of it. And you could get away with a lot sometimes by just being able to recover so much health. Which, a little more dubious, maybe. Alright, time to find out if I'm right about everything, even though I always am. There's nothing back here. Crat Grand Exhibition 18, blah, 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 blah. witness the Grand. Blah, blah. They're so committed to not saying what year it is in these kinds of games. It's always strange to me. I don't quite get it. This refusal to just set it an actual year. It feels immersion breaking to not have just a, a year. Welcome back to this place. The... The checkpoint's gone. Still, still dead horses. There's a big guy. Is there an ability to go back there, or are they still... Maybe they didn't move the boxes. That's almost weirder, honestly. Ow. Oh, they're at this... I'm always caught a little off guard by who has how much health, because these enemies all... Some of these enemies die so quickly. All right, let's get your attention before this becomes a problem for me. Does he have a head? He looks headless. 
Yeah. Why does he have? Oh, he, this is hair. Where his where his hair was. Ow. Oh, he's alive. All his organs are coming out. He's got all of his guts, just a weird beach ball of intestines just poking on out. Oh, that statue fell over. Oh, I can finally grab the item that he was holding. Wasn't he holding an item the first time around? It's just an ergo. Okay. <laughs> cool. Why isn't it at least a quartz? Am I crazy? Maybe I'm wrong. I thought I could have sworn I could see him holding something at the beginning of the game, and it was like, <gasps> what's that? So I was kind of excited to find out what it was. And it just being a dim ergo is just kind of disappointing. You would really hope it'd be a quartz or something cool or impactful. Those kind of moments are always a little interesting to think about, or at least Illusory Wall has made it interesting for me to think about because he's done videos researching a lot of these different elements of like these moments in like the various Dark Souls games where you're shown what what is seemingly the same location but like in video game terms it's not the same location they will have made a different level and they just make it look like it's the same place in the case of uh, stuff like Dark Souls Three, it's like when you see a, when you see like across a broken bridge to the other side, you would think that that other side of the bridge is the same level when you get over there. But what you're looking at across the bridge is actually not the same level that you will play when you get there. Ow! Fuck! Oh, he's shooting things at me. What? I don't like their tentacles. Stop it. Ah! Fuck. Um. Um. He like entered the weakened state but didn't? I don't know if he if he freaks out at the beginning of that state. Or if it's just that he was already starting to freak out so I, he couldn't get stunned correctly. I don't know. But yeah, in Dark Souls, Illusory Wall's video is about this, but like, you'll look across a gap in Dark Souls 3 to the other side of a broken bridge, and there'll be like a level over there. And you will eventually get over there, and you look back and look back where you were previously, and be like, oh wow, I'm over here now. And so you would think that that'd be like the same environments being loaded each time when you look the other direction. But it's actually like a, a quick, lower detail mock-up of the location that's pretending to be that area to give you the sense that, wow, I'm over here now. And that's made particularly noticeable by the fact that sometimes the two don't match. And there's some goofy elements, like sometimes I'll go so far as to place items over there to simulate the items that you will pick up when you get there. And sometimes when you pick up said items, the, the duplicate of it will disappear to simulate that you picked it up. But other times it might not disappear. Or sometimes they're slightly misplaced for me compared to each other. Weirdly, like, waiting for me but not attacking? Okay. Sometimes the items will be coded wrong, so there'll be two items next to each other, and if you pick one up and not the other one, and then look at the example from across the thing again, the wrong one will be gone between the two of them, or they won't quite line up, or one, or there just won't be a matching item, or the items won't be the right, or if you like cheat and fly over there and grab it, the item won't be the correct item, it'll be like something else entirely. There's a lot of little goofy tricks that are done there. And then one of the weirdest moments is that uh, when you're uh, in, <clears throat> I think it's when you're in the Tomb of Giants, the huge, the huge dark area where you can't see anything at all. Uh, 
I think there's a part where you look out and you can see the demon ruins over the horizon. It's like the only, it's like that, that side is the only ones you can see. But then you get to the demon ruins and you look up and you're like, there's no hole. There is no opening through which you could have seen the demon, seen that place from the demon ruins. That really high, it's like a one, like in the universe it basically has to be a one way mirror. A giant one. Which is goofy as shit, but it's just because like it's, uh, in one level it's just a cliff face. And the other level it's a huge opening that shows the window through. And they just didn't make the two match. And similarly, like, this is, like, it's not that surprising that the, that the teleporter is showing up forward instead of going backwards, because, like, this, this probably is just a new level, functionally. Woo! He's got a big slashy. Ooh, that's a lot of attacks. Not my proud moment. Ow, bad dodge. Ow. <laughs> Big miss. All right. Thought he was done. He looked so done. There we go. It's kind of goofy watching his charge. Oop, that's good. It's goofy watching him charge forward like that, but then also have perfect tracking and chase me in a circle at very close range because he's so big. That you're like, this guy can't be running that fast right now. <laughs> I feel like he's not running with that much inertia if he can follow me perfectly in a circle. So we can keep checking down here. That staircase is obliterated. Be gone with thee. Yeah, I get what they're going for here, though, because you're going to the previous area, and now you're seeing how it's all corrupted by the disease that we've been all worried about. Because this place was full of puppets the first time around. We didn't even necessarily know the monsters were going to be a thing yet. Hey, buddy. Hey, you having a good day? Ain't nobody left. Fairy tale of the three brothers of the workshop tower. First part is torn off. Thus, there lived in Krat a technician who made the friendly three puppet brothers, an alchemist who breathed life into puppets, and a stalker who rectified puppets gone wrong. The three brothers built the craftsman's workshop tower and made phenomenal puppets. The puppets seemed as if they're alive. The good ones helped the people of Krat and worked hard, danced, and sang songs. The people were extremely glad, and everyone was happy. They said it's all thanks to the three brothers. The three good good brothers lived happily ever after. I don't suppose you'd like to buy anything. Sorry, I've been on my own so long, my sales pitch is a little rusty. Hard to engage in trade when you're fleeing from monsters. <laughs> Even if the abnormal has become normal, the living must live. Buy something, and you'll help both of us. Mr. Green Shop, what carcass body fluid bottle? That just sounds gross. So they're generally throwing items, but this is a Legion Caliber. Might as well grab that. That's an upgrade item. Otherwise, kind of who cares? Erosion resistance converter. No quartz. Just when you think things are getting better, eh? The other day, someone killed the king of puppets on Rosa Isabel Street. Since the king caused the puppet frenzy, I thought we were saved. Turns out that without the puppets, 
the monster population grew. Sometimes the light at the end of the tunnel is the front of a non-coming train. <laughs> hmm. I guess it's just Prot's time to meet its doom. Well, good luck, buddy. Ain't nobody still alive at this point. It's a boss chamber? Oh, it's a reveal. Shit's fucked. Collapsing crot. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna find that one secret item at the beginning of the game anymore. Whoa. This used to be the workshop's transportation base close to Krat's central station. Maybe that's why the puppets were so hell-bent on attacking the place during the frenzy. But I didn't see it myself. I, I didn't know the scale of it all. So let's add that earthquake to our list of strange and bizarre happenings in Krat and... I'll keep moving. So these crystals give out an aura that gives you disruption status. Uh-oh. Dude, I want to read. Ooh. I'll run back over here. Uh, ba -ba 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 ba 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 Agent Caliber lets me do an upgrade when I feel like going back there. And I'll be able to get level 3, which I'll never use, probably. Being able to do the strongest attack of them all. Not that one. To my beloved Gideon. The world is dying. I heard news of the epidemic dozens of times a day. If, on top of this, I am not able to see you, I may suffocate and die. I'll wait for you at the sign tonight, as usual. Don't be late, my love. They're dead as fuck, y'all. Bye. Resplendent ergo. That sounds like a ton of ergo instead of the dim, shitty bulbs of crapitude. Ow! Eh. It's fine. It's fine. Ah, a dangerous play for a place for a butterfly to spawn. A terrifying place for a butterfly? Ooh. Don't care. <laughs> you, you got a rock. You can throw it at someone. That's exciting. It was not. Did I hit it? I did, but it's still alive. Fuck. Now I'm being attacked by these guys. I just almost died. But I'm gonna be alright. Is that thing coming for me? It sure looks like it is. Have I fought that guy before? I'm kind of scared. Can't get over there, but there is an item over there, so you, it loops back around, I guess. I guess, oh, I almost walked right off. The very jagged ledge. So it's distance. The sense of how far away it is all over the place. This must loop around to that spot. Let's check this out. That's a lot of those things in one place.
Ain't nothing up here. I'm in danger. Oh, I don't like that. No. Oh, God. I'm going to stand very still and not catch any more disruption for a bit. I'm pretty sure I'd die instantly if it fills up. I think I may have read that at some point. But also just, it has the same vibe of the taken up setting amount of damage the moment this thing fills up stat that happens in the, in the second half of Bloodborne. This game does, this game is in many ways inspired and in many ways a shocking and impressive thing and one of the best games of the year. And many other ways just like really overtly derivative. <laughs> it's not exactly a criticism or at least it's not a very big one. It's just, you know, game's really derivative in some of these cases. You just, much like how when I'm playing Password, I'm like, oh, this thing is, this, this thing exists because of Zero Escape. That's why this part's in here. There's a lot of moments where I'm like, oh, this part of this game is done this way because Bloodborne. And it's just recreating a thing from Bloodborne sometimes. And some of the stuff stands on its own as being something you wouldn't question if you just saw it without context and were like, ah, that's interesting. But some of it's like almost like confusing why it would exist in that form and only really makes sense as being a nod to Bloodborne. It's back and forth. I'm amazed how much I get screwed over by this thing grazing walls. I could be shockingly far from the wall. Good by light source, speaking of. I want this thing on all the time, I just lose track. It's like not quite distractingly bright enough to notice that it's a light source, and it's also like not ever quite dark enough to be super aware that you don't have a light source. But the video probably looks better whenever it's on. Ow. He did not stagger from that part. <laughs> that is shocking little little damage. Oh, that was gonna cause it. That hit? Those tentacles must be driving his hitbox up like crazy, because that's no way that that looked like it was gonna hit. Still giving me dark moons to the covenant. When am I gonna get a full moon? Like bro. Bro. Yeah, I've had some dark moons. Cool. Where's my full moon? <laughs> I've got, it's been like... I feel like I've had my weapon basically maxed out for like 10 hours of game now. And they just continually refer, refuse to give me the next piece. Ow. Oh, there's the shortcut. It's not huge. It literally just skips me going down there, then around, then up here. It's not, it's not much of a shortcut. Uh, is this the way forward? There was more stuff the other way too. Vivid ergo. They say when crystals appear from the ground, it's a sign of the end days. In the end, we're all going to die. Everyone's going to die. It's very clearly like four words. This is just very funny. This house is very crooked. Am I gonna get ambushed here? 
Almost every alley seems to just kind of drop a guy on me. Stop it. That's a goofy disruption one because it was just never going to be a threat. Is that the way forward? Ah, so I went up there. Okay, this is the place I saw that I thought was the way forward that I didn't check yet. So it was going to be a small cliff that you couldn't cross. And then I was going to get around that way. So I actually went the right way. Um? Ow! No! I got head-butted to death by the weird dickhead bubble monster. No. Lame death makes sad. Yep, all well, the crystals respawn. We have to be very careful that on the run back I don't just spike my disruption meter like crazy and, and die very early. Overall, I'll be back to where we started very quickly. It does kind of feel like that shortcut was created for this enemy to kill you quickly. <laughs> like, well, he got you really quickly, but... Well, you're back already. Not that big of a deal, right? Ah, you're not done yet? Shit. You can get them in white... You can have them staggerable for so long. I wonder if anyone's disappointed that I'm just never using that uh, form for the most part. It's just so slow. And low range. This this version of the weapon just feels strong enough that I feel like I don't need to use the other one. It's also got a really cool uh, blue combo, so it's hard to argue with that. The other the other one, the, I think the other weapon is that you you have to charge up bl a blue attack for a very long time, and the more longer you charge, the more blue it uses. And that's just begging for me to screw up and get hit. And we're using a new one. This does not surprise me. I'm not surprised we're using a new one of these because uh, this kind of level is so chaotic and crumbly and filling up the ravines and whatnot is a destructive way of leveling. Ah, uh, you can't go here anymore. You literally can't. I wonder if... is level 2? I don't know if level two is where the, uh, I don't think it is. I think I, I think I just can't go back to the first secret now. I think it's gone. But yeah, it's all crossed out and now we're here in this new version. Uh, it was, I think I was about to say something and lost it. Well. Oh man. Surprised the other attack staggered him, but that one didn't. That was fully charged. That guy's trying to shoot me with a gun! That's so rude. Is this the Alchemist Guild or something? Everyone is so tall. I'm just a little guy. I guess I'm a puppet. Are puppets short? <laughs> Oh, 
That's a lot of health to chew through. I think Dark Souls tried to hand wave it as being like, ah, oh, the more souls you consume, the larger you get, or something, which explains to some extent everyone being so big and every boss fight being big and so on, but at the same time, over the course of the game, you consume an, inc an incredible amount of souls, as far as we're aware. I don't know, we don't necessarily have a scale for it, but you defeat every big bad guy in the entire game, so it seems like you should have a ton of souls. And you never get bigger. But the real answer is gameplay. It may not make sense, but it just makes the game better. There you go. Chill out. Because the real answer is that when you're playing a third-person action game with a lock-on system, the camera centers behind you and your character is in the way. So one of the best ways to make the, it possible to see enemies well is to make them larger than you. Because then they their eclipse, their, their silhouette is not eclipsed by yours. Because if you think about it, the guy in the middle of the screen is kind of an obstacle to you being able to see what's happening a lot of the time in the game. So they kind of have to design around that. And these guys really love to not be facing me when I walk, walk into rooms. It's really simplifying this process for me. Primer for workshop technicians. Subtitle, do you want to become a workshop technician? A primer for aspirants. No other city in the world today has been receiving more attention than Krot. Bleh. Well, <laughs> the city of puppets. Back when the almighty uh, V visited, it was still just a fishing village. <gasps> oh, cosmic horror. It has undergone a, gr a brilliant change in the past 30 years, spurred by Krot's puppet industry. The puppets made in Krot's workshops are known for using new technology that is on a different level from their competitors. The workshop puppets are intricate like humans, and they perform their master's orders so naturally that people wonder if they have souls. Many competitors tried to replicate the workshop's special mechanical hearts, only to fail and prove the outstanding gap between their capabilities. The monopoly on the special power stone, ergo, and the skills to optimize its efficiency those are what give Krat's workshop its edge. But the workshop's beginning wasn't always smooth. The workshop history begins with one legendary craftsman, and his records are great manuals for the apprentices. The legendary craftsman G, whom every technician knows about. On the next page, we'll learn about his achievements. Oh, made it. <laughs> The workshop history. Should I say the workshop's history? I don't know. G. Isn't G the name of the guy in that that some that they're looking for in a House of the Dead? Is that new or old? That's old. Oh yeah, that's where he is. Oh, he's still there. He responds, huh? Okay. Oh, there's items there just to taunt me. I'll have to go about all the way around when I get one, but I mean... Oh, I guess you can climb back up on the way down. On the way back. Special Crot Supply Box! That's good! That should mean more inventory for the store, and it might be a Quartz. So I might have just picked up the ability to level up and get my next skill. But like the other kind of leveling. Let's go find a shortcut back to the spawn. Oh, I do not like how the left side of this room is a wall. Hi! Oh! How did I not make contact? What the fuck? Ah! 
ow, I'm on fire. Ow, 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 Stop, 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 stop. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. I feel like I got screwed over there a bit. How... I did a full swing and it didn't hit him, and then I swung again. Like, I, the number of things that missed. That was a wild fight. That was bizarre. There's an item down there. I don't know how I get back if I get there, though. Let's activate the shortcut. Does this go back to the spawn? I'm not sure exactly where this is at a glance. Yeah, we're back. Okay. Well, I'll level real quick. I should be able to level, and I probably can get a quartz. Although, if I do level, if I do get a quartz, I might not be able to afford to level anymore. Probably can, though. I have a lot of stuff stocked up. At the house of Vanini. Right, it's you, which is, and that's good because you're the one that actually does sell quartzes when this you happens. Made the right choice. Lady Antonia is completely cured. She is so happy. I don't even know how to thank you. I know now what a glorious feeling it is to wish for the happiness of someone you care for. Perhaps it's presumptuous for a puppet to call that feeling love. I am happy enough just to protect her as best I can. Thank you for saving her, and for guiding me through this emotion. There's no way this goes no well. No matter what fate brings us, I will be at Lady Antonia's side. Serving her is my duty, the very reason I was created. Welcome to Hotel Krat. How may I be of service? This is a supply box. I shall open it. He no doesn't matter what I don't think he even says welcome. anything new there. I think he always says the same thing. Ah, full Moonstone of the Covenant! And a Quartz! And Legion Calipers! I don't need any more, really! Oh my god! He sells three now! He sells three! And the first one's cheaper! Ah! 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 I fully expect that, with him so happy, that she's definitely gonna die. That's the gut punch we're gonna do. Which could be rough, because I might lose access to everything he does if he if he reacts poorly to that. Because he might die. I get to upgrade it one more time to do 30 more damage! Yeah! That's just the base damage, just not in showing the scaling, right? Either way, let's do it. Oh. Oh, I can I can do two more of them. Well, that's important. That's not that much souls, too. Okay, it gets even stronger. Shit, this was a huge deal. Wow, wow. It's a good thing I grabbed that box. Uh, how much do I have on me right now? you're the fastest way to check. I have 16,000 on me. That's enough. That's that's how much I need. Okay, well, let's do that then. Cool. And then I'll be completely out of ergo. But who cares? Hopefully I didn't misread something. No matter what, sir, be welcome. Sixteen thousand. Oh wait, can I not afford to upgrade it now? <laughs> oh, I can afford this part too. That's another thirty damage. And now it's level five and it's done. Okay, that is the final level. I thought that was the uh, the Titanite slab equivalent, but I guess not. There just is one more tier of big old Titanite globes. For all I know, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna start finding an R and I, and I'm gonna feel dumb for paying for it. We'll see. Maybe they are rare. 
Either way, I get to now have a uh, significantly stronger weapon immediately, so it'll... It's not that big of a deal if I lost a, about one level's worth of skill of souls. That's not the end of the world. Listen, I was excited, and now when I find it, I'm going to be sad, because I don't have another weapon I'm focusing on, so it'll be useless to me. But I won't sell it, so it'll still be, so it'll be even more useless to me. Let's see, I already tried looking through these before and didn't like them, right? I did survival. Uh, let's, let's check ability type. Charges leads when enemies are eliminated. Increase grinder's weapon durability recovery speed. That's not the worst idea because I do do that during combat. And so making it go faster is good. I don't care about legion stuff. Lower stamina consumption of all things are discharged. So a series of upgrades that ultimately make it so that if you're out of healing, you get way stronger. Take less damage, do more damage, and use less stamina. Might be a speedrun tactic to use up all your healing and then just play a better character all the time. Lowers weapon durability reduction as your character's weight increases. I did increase my overall maximum weight so I can use more. Charges Fable upon reviving. Lowers the Legion consumption. Restores weapon durability when using special grindstones might be pretty strong. The problem is I don't know how much it restores it by. Is it full? Probably not. Legion Magazine, Consumables, Throwable Objects, Consumables with Plunged Effects, Death, Fable Catalysts are stronger. These are all pretty uninteresting. More Possessed Consumables might be neat, except I never need Consumables. And yeah, I can't justify buying any Legion upgrades because I almost never use Legion upgrades. I'll just do weapon durability, goes up faster. It's a little disappointing in concept, but during the heat of a boss fight, it is like a God, please fill, please fill, please fill, please, fill, please, please, please. Add Legion arm slots? You can equip a second Legion arm slot? That's kind of wild. And you swap it out in the fly? I guess. Retain guard regain too. Increases a certain amount of guard regain. Retains a certain amount of guard regain when receiving damage. So your rally mechanic is is, is more robust. Increase cube uses. I don't care about cubes. Increases time of enemy staggerable status. I probably want that. It's still possible to lose it. But overall, not psyched about these. Guard regain is kind of cool. And. And I never, I never bought the original one, so this one's cheaper, so I can get this one for two points instead of four. So I should just get that one. Retain guard, regain one. Yep, there's also the weaker version. There's a, I assume they're not weaker, it's just, it's just those again. So like, I should just go back and get these ones, because they're cheaper. For increased stagger window and guard, regain. Yeah, and these are all healing upgrades. Yeah, I don't care about cube items. I don't really get them. It seems like crap, but I haven't experimented with it that much. I totally will accept I will totally admit that. I don't I'm getting five fine without having a bunch of belt slots equipped, because I don't throw stuff. But I guess an amulet slot might be my next goal. Yeah, I might want to get the amulet next. It's disappointing that the next tier doesn't have a thing that I want to prioritize, but it is what it is. Some of it's just an excuse to just keep spending quartz so that you can get the various passives. Because at the very least, you are just stacking a bunch of stuff, and so if you just get the most relevant stuff, then it'll hopefully help you help you in a bunch of small ways, that, even if you don't fully notice them. Yeah, one more amulet slot will mean I can equip one more special effect, but the amulets are also not that strong, but at least you can swap them out, allowing you to get a variety of different effects and adapt without having to respect your character. I feel like I haven't made a choice related to this thing in like the last like seven hours. I feel like that's dropped off hard. 
Oh, and I've also not played the new record. That'd be part of it. Feel someday. Exotic. Which one's new? I think one of these is new. It might be the one that's in a sleeve still. But it's also three minutes long. Maybe I'll end the episode on that, but let's do a bit more stuff first. I meant to play it while I was doing stuff, but oh well. It can get distracting talking while the game is playing music that has vocals anyway. But yeah, I had the thought while I was at the counter putting stuff in that I should go uh, put a record on so that it's running while I'm doing other stuff and it can increase my humanity. For whatever reason that is. Yeah, I have five Fable now. That's a pretty good upgrade. That increases how much Fable I can bank, which means when a big bad thing does show up, I can do my big flurry attack, use three Fable in the process, then fight just a little while, maybe do some big heavy charged attacks on the stunned guy from the Fable attacks, if I'm, if I'm lucky. And then all I have to do is charge one meter, and then I can do a full Fable combo again. This seems like the way forward, but I want to drop down and get the item that was hiding over there. He took way longer. Maybe it's because when I fight them, they... He does something at the beginning, so maybe he's starting. Okay, this also went back here. I, didn't, I wasn't sure how I was going to get back, but th that makes sense. I guess that was the best way to start things, because that's that would have been the most efficient. Oh well. Yeah, I think the first thing they do at the beginning of the fight might be to activate their bomb. So I guess the one that aggro's on me is already ready to start blowing up, and that's why he blows up so shortly after he dies. Whereas the other guy got the drop on him, so he never activated it, but then it also must trigger when he dies. That would be one hell of a nightmare enemy to have, like, spawning during a boss fight. We're getting spooky noises. That's cool. <laughs> You seem neat. Anyway, please die. Ow. Oh, I've been stabbed! Oh, I've been stabbed more! Oh, I'm being stabbed so many times! No, stop the stabbings. That wasn't that much damage overall. TBH. I meant to charge that up different. Oh no. That's not good. Okay, that one doesn't have much health though. Ow. Okay, nope. Let's not get stuck on terrain there. Oh no. Please actually hit the one I need to kill. Fuck. How am I missing? Giant enemies really fuck up my sense of scale sometimes. Oh god, that's bad. Ow. God, she's so annoying. Ow. She's so good at getting right outside my range. There we 
There we go. Please don't explode with disruption. Ha! Ah, I was off to such a good start that I thought that was going to be an easy fight. But uh, I had trouble successfully hitting the bonus enemy. Probably try to regenerate now. I had trouble hitting the bonus enemy. And then uh, oh, things are just kind of falling apart in general. Uh, this way. I have to do the big ladder again. We. It did feel like my new upgrades were a big hit, though. Damn. Yep, we're up. To, we're up to about four hundred and thirty damage. Gonna be hard to get much stronger than that. Hey, that was a boss fight on my first try. And that it had an actual health bar, but it wasn't a hunter, because the hunters with the health bars just aren't that strong. Victor could not be completed. May she be the owner. May she become the owner of the truly complete elixir. Feels like someone's developing anti-puppet monsters? Oh. Uh-oh. Let's get out of this before it collapses? Your lies. Come on, pal. No time to lose. Your lies of P. I did get a little bit of that little that little tingle where I was all right right here, and I'm like, oh, this area was blocked last time. I can go through now. In that corner, and I realized where I was. Let me guess. I can't teleport home now. The stargazer isn't transmitting. This was a bust, pal. Let's get back to the hotel quickly. Mm. You know, walking works. Let's walk. Oh, I can level up here again, though. Okay. So it's just back to being usable here, the the convenient way. God damn it! If only they just let me keep that. No. 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 I didn't realize how quite how late in the game we might have been. And I felt like we were still kind of midway through the, ha the second half or something. Yeah, this is the way forward. I just see if there's anything else to do. Oh, hello. The original. We can use the original phone. Yes, 
Sometimes it's good to trust your feelings. A metaphor is a tool for hiding horrifying truths. It is a creation unique to humans. Now then, another question. Not a riddle, no rhymes. Just a question for you. Ergo does not appear out of thin air, so where did all those puppets get all that? Ergo. Ha! Yes! Always leave them laughing. That's what the king says. So, take this key, please. Then I say, up with yes. Till we meet again. I trust you'll remember. I lead the club, true. But I'm also... The Trinity key. I feel like I missed one of the places to use a key, unfortunately, but I'm not sure. This has just stayed blocked forever. This should be the way forward, but I think I might have missed another thing to do back there still. But yeah, once I walk, once you walk out and see the place kind of coming apart, that is the hint that maybe you're getting late in the game. And yeah. The base is under attack. This is very much like an ending is kind of happening, huh? I'm way closer to the end than I thought I was, I think. Oh no. Oh no. Hey, uh, so there's something horrible in front of the hotel. It might be worse than what we saw at the cathedral. All right, tighten up your springs and let's go. Okay, never mind. He's triggering there, and that is the front door to the circus, so... BRB. <laughs> We're gonna go this way after all. Oh, item. Up top. I was wrong about things. Ba ba damn bow bow. Got it. Half moonstone. Is it a corrupted version? It is a corrupted version of the first enemy. I remember this guy, the guy that first teaches you the red attacks. It's him specifically. Ow. Whoop. God damn it. Ah. Nope. Ow. Wow, that was really short. That was such a short moment of weakness, wow. Hmm. So it seems like those enemies do punish the stagger system by doing that when you're about to win. Just frustrating. Yeah, this is where I thought you might get the secret item. I never found it. Now it's maybe too late, because it's a different version of the world now, unless they also placed it in this one. They're just kind of showering us with go right now, damn. Okay. That's our bunch of loot. And uh, I guess this is what I get for saying that I was going to uh, play the record when, next time, or at the end of the episode. Literally, like, immediately that stopped being an option. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Are we once again going to have a boss fight in this room where the first major boss was, I wonder? I say major boss because the one on the train station was was pretty simple. It was an elevated extra in a way, but this was like a boss fight up here. Your proper rite of passage before you arrive up there. Chuckles, I'm in danger. Uh, that's something. Is it a corrupted version of the same guy? I think it is. He's back.
Yep. Not that much health, though. Nope, not that much health. I wonder if there's a phase two, or if it's just to be meant to be a reference. Like, hey, it's the guy, remember? He's fucked up and evil now. He's got a horrifying maw. <laughs> oh, he grabs. Oh, he grabs. Oh, I'm being swallowed alive. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, he summons guys. That's not great. <laughs> Ow, fuck. Oh, he's still coming. God. Ugh. He's destroying my weapon, that's for sure. Oh god! I'm trying to kill the little guy. Oh fuck. No, no. Oh man, damn it. It's easy enough that I should I feel like I should be doing this on my first try, so I'm kinda bummed. No, a grab! Damn it. Thankfully the throw isn't that much damage at the end, but damn. God damn it. Nah. Damn. He really fucked me up. Just very huge attacks. I should probably be getting back in the groove of dodging. But also, damn, I just <laughs> get some very bad luck with just him just putting an enemy out there and all, like, all I have to do is hit this enemy and... Uh, the big guy's still coming after me. Hmm. Oh, I just used my last cure. Great. That was apparently my last one, and also I just used it preemptively because I was on muscle memory trying to use what item is normally there. Well, for to transform first. Yeah. Oh, there's decay. There we go. One heal. There's an attempt on that fight. Damn. All I had to do is completely lose my ability to heal. And there's a full Moonstone and a Quartz just to taunt me. Huh. On one hand, it's genuinely cool for this guy to show up and be a boss fight in this location. I even kind of called out, like, oh, when I get... Like, I came back here earlier in the game when I, there was, it was hinted that something changed back at the train station and I was like, oh man, what happened? Uh, and thought there would be a new boss fight there when I passed back through because sometimes when you pass through old areas in Souls games there's a new, a new fight or a new version of the old fight just to catch you off guard but that whole time that they said stuff was change, had changed at the station, nothing was there I guess they were trying to foreshadow this, but they just made me think that things had actually changed at the time I just lost the ability to level. Hmm. I'm guessing I must be able to just get reach her and level up now? 
Because they took away the ability to level up that these now, the moment I killed him, just like last time. Weird. Huh. Well, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, not a... He's neat, and it's a climactic-ish moment where you're going back to the base. It's just, for the first person to drop an item that important, it's surprisingly just just a guy. Wasn't that, that wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> Got him. Mm -hmm.